In this video, we got this dirt cheap Nitro RC car. And in this video, we're gonna find out if it's any good. Do you wanna get rich quick? Then buy a lottery ticket and hope for the best. If you want to get rich for sure, you have to provide either a product or service of value. I've spent the past 10 years of my life trying many different ways of making money online. And by far, the quickest and easiest way that I have found is by selling on eBay. And I've helped hundreds of people make thousands of dollars every single month. So if you want more money so you can buy more toys, buy a nice house, or quit that dreaded 9 till 5, then click the link down below and I'll show you how. Oh, check it out! So there you have it, it's got a Nitro Polestar engine, there's the tune pipe. It's actually got a two-speed transmission. It's four-wheel drive, double wishbone suspension, front and rear. Here's the controller, it also comes with extra stickers and the instructions. So in order to run it, you will also need to supply your own nitro fuel. And here's my favorite flavor, a glow starter, eight AA batteries for the controller and another four for the car. Now I don't really fully trust these types of receiver packs because if one of these batteries come out uh, then it could cause a runaway. So I, I normally prefer to run something like a hump pack but my hump pack is still in that car at the moment so hopefully it's going to be okay. Alright here we go. Moment of truth. So steering. Nah, not the fastest but with a hump pack it probably would make it a bit faster. Here we have throttle and brakes. So we're going to run a tank through it at idle and then we're going to take it out for a blast. So the best way that I've found to prime the engine is give it full throttle, put your finger over the exhaust and just pull on the cord a couple of times. Oh, it's tight, but can you see, look, the fuel's going in. Sometimes the engine can be a little bit tight from new, so what you can do is just slacken off the glow plug slightly, get it started and then tighten it back up. tank and then we're going to take it out for a blast so there we go that's nearly a tank done i've turned it off before we got to the bottom because i got bored of waiting next we're going to take it out maybe another tank of not going too hard on it and then we're going to start tuning it up well that's my intention at least normally i try to run it in and i forget myself and i just can't help it but go flat out but bleh. run it in fast it will be fast maybe my excuse anyway oh and the good thing about this being a hsp is that you should be able to get all the parts relatively easily and did i mention subscribe smash the bell thumbs up or down whatever makes you happy so i've just put some holes in the windshield with a body reamer i'm going to put a link to something similar down below if you want to do the same and i've also cut out the rear window here just so i can get access to the engine to get the glow starter on there and hopefully the pull start maybe we've got to cut this one here out as well the idea being is that we get some airflow in there uh, to give the engine some cooling otherwise if that's all enclosed it's going to run the risk of getting that engine overheated and um, that's really what kills these nitro engines is letting them get too hot too hot to touch too hot to run so next we're going to give it a couple of runs with the body off just to get it tuned up and then we're going to put the body on and take it for a blast <laughs>
running really good, but I think it's lost front wheel drive. It appears that the front wheel drive is gone and now it's only rear wheel drive. So back in the shop, so what actually happened is that this drive shaft here, it slid out. And you can see, if you look right on the end of that cup, you can't really see it from this camera angle, you can see it on this one, there's a little red little spacer thing in there. And on this side, it looks like it might have perished or something. So I'm just going to take it apart, put another spacer in there, put it back together again, and it should be all good. But so far, this engine is running perfectly. I've not had to tune it, it's just running absolutely bog standard. And it hasn't hit second gear yet, but... As the engine beds itself in, it's going to go a bit faster, and it really does hit second gear, then it's really going to fly. I mean, there's a hole up here where I presume you can adjust the transmission where the shift point is. So once it's all properly run in, um, we can get this thing going faster. If it doesn't change, we'll play back with this, and we'll get the second gear to come in. And I really think this is going to fly in second gear. As you can see, if you look in here, there is a little O-ring, but I think it's going to need a little bit more than an O-ring. So I'm just going to cut a small piece of fuel tube and put that in there and also in this side here. All right, there we go. Got it all back together again. The drive shaft's in there now, nice and central. And hopefully now, it's not going to shoot out again, so let's give it another blast. in the shop and it's all looking good i'll tell you the thing that i dislike about nitro the most it's just a mess look at that just the stuff just goes absolutely everywhere um it's maybe due to the exhaust being angled up too much look and it has actually melted a little bit of the body shell so two things we can do we can either angle that exhaust down a little bit bend that little piece of wire there or just cut a little piece out of the um, body here but first thoughts Apart from that little drive shaft coming out, the thing just performed absolutely perfectly. And it's only going to get faster and faster and faster as it gets run in. But all in all, very good car. Link if you want to know more info where you can get one from down below. Alright, so I've still got a waffle for another minute or so just so I can make up a 10 minute video. Uh, but a question that I see asked quite often is what do I use to edit my videos? So here we have my editing station. Uh, this table here, I actually custom built it myself because I could not find a table big enough. This table is absolutely ginormous. It's three meters long and over a meter wide. And I could not find anything that size. I, I like spreading out when I do my work. I can have my paperwork and books and stuff. I'm trying to work on a confined space for me. Uh, it yeah, makes me feel claustrophobic, so I need a lot of space to work on. So the editing software I use is Adobe Premiere Pro 2020. It's the latest version, and I've actually got the whole Adobe Creative Suite that comes with sort of everything. So I use Photoshop as well to edit my thumbnails. The monitors you see here are two LG 4K monitors, and the reason I've got two is so you can be editing on one screen and you can have all your files and all your other stuff on the other screen. And then next to that, I've got a couple of these monitor speakers. I'm not really sure what make they are. Somebody in the comments will probably remind me. And then if I ever do any voiceovers, and this here is the microphone that I use for that. I don't do many voiceovers. I usually just talk everything straight into the camera. 
Uh, but sometimes when I do my intros, like in this video, then that's when I sit here and I use this. And then you can't plug a microphone like this directly into a computer, so you need this little sound box thing here. I've forgotten what it's called. It's a focus right, but basically you plug the microphone into that, and then at the back of that is a USB port so you can plug it into your computer. The next down, I use this editing keyboard. This is a Logitech, I think it is. Yeah. So the good thing is with this, it's got all these shortcuts that are actually embedded into the keys. They're sort of painted on there, so you know what all the different controls do. It makes it a lot easier than trying to remember what they all do, or if you have to try and do it manually and find all the options for the menus and all that stuff. Next to that, I've got a gaming mouse, and the reason I use a gaming mouse is because it's got all these programmable buttons on the side. So basically, I'll just program these buttons so it saves me having to fish around and use all the ones that I use all the time. I can just hit it quickly on the mouse. And then I've got this Canon 70D camera up here. Uh, this is actually the camera that I bought specifically to do YouTube with. Uh, but I don't really tend to use it that much. It's quite big, it's quite bulky. And if I'm out with the RC cars trying to make movies, it's just way too big. So I normally use my phone and the GoPro. So this camera just kind of sits up here now. I, I sort of use it if I talk to the camera, which is not that much on this channel. And then as for the computer itself, that sits down there. I had it custom made by Overclockers, I think it was. And I'm not really sure of all the gigabollocks, so let's get something up on the screen. So there's all the specs of my editing computer, if anybody's interesting. It's also got a fancy graphic card in there that's supposed to make the editing a bit faster. Uh, I can't remember what it is, a 1080, something like that. And then I've got my computer also hooked up to this great big 60 inch TV that I've got hanging on the wall. And sometimes when I finish doing the videos, I'll just sit them, stick the video up on there. I can sit here on the sofa or the couch, whatever, and I can just sit back and I can watch my own video and make sure that it looks good on all devices because the videos have to look good on like a computer, on a mobile, and also on a big screen TV. And then here's an electric piano because sometimes if I want to just relax and chill out a little bit, I might just play a little bit of piano. Not that I'm any good, 